Welcome to the House of Good News Worship and Prayer, where the Spirit of the Lord is manifest. I tell you, I, 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 I don't feel worthy because you got some powerful people that's there. And if I could just say a word or two to encourage someone, that's all I want to do. And I, I like my brother, Dr. McGugan, because he was saying, you don't forget the ones that bought you. And see, a lot of young ministers I be around and I see, they forget the elders. They forget them. They're going to get to church and change the program around and do everything. And they don't respect the elders. And that's a sad thing. That's a sad thing. And so, Dr. McGugan, I thank you for even doing that, you know, respecting our elders and respecting the seniors, because without them, we wouldn't be here today. That's what we got to teach. Young ministers, young preachers and everything. It's nice to do all that, but you got to give respect to where honors do. Yes, sir. And a lot of times we got to respect the elderly, because if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here today. If we wasn't getting the training and everything that they have given us. And I thank God for that. I thank God for my pastor, Reverend Leon C. Adam, Parrot and Meredith. And I stayed with him 20 years, working under him. They go nowhere then. And some things he said I didn't like, but you know what? I stayed there. And, and that's what it is. It's chastening. And, and I've learned. And now I'm taking his spot. And remember, what you do for Christ will last. And I never thought I would be a pastor. No, it never crossed my mind. But one thing I always remember, you take care of your pastor, you take out for your leader, you look out for them. And guess what? Now I'm the leader. It comes back around. So if I would have did my pastor wrong and run up, all that would have been coming back to me. And, and that's what it's a learning experience. And I'm still learning. I'm still learning. I'm not going to be before you very long. I got two scriptures, two scriptures. And I know it's Labor Day weekend, not Labor Day. Um. Fourth of July weekend, Independence Day, I realized that. And I'm going to work with Independence Day uh, this afternoon. I'm going to work with Independence Day. But I think it's needed in the church. And we don't talk about it enough. You'll understand where I'm coming from. First scripture is St. John, the 8th chapter and the 36th verse. Galatians 5 and 1. Those two scriptures. St. John's, the 8th chapter, 36th verse. And Galatians. Five and one. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. I thank you right now for life, health, and strength. Lord, I'm asking that you take me out of self, that you will be lifted up, that you will be glorified. Let something be said or done that will encourage your people to go on to more. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let your will be done. Amen. St. John's 8 and 36. And it reads as thus. If the Son, therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Amen. The next scripture, Galatians 5 and 1. And it reads as thus. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Amen. That's the second scripture. Subject this morning, this afternoon, the real Independence Day. The real Independence Day. Man. The real Independence Day. Uh, we look at Independence Day and we have holidays, we have picnics, we do different things. But what is the real Independence Day? Think about it. In 1776, which is amazing, 1776. They talk about free and slave. We they signed the Declaration of Independence. All men are created equal, and we go all this thing, but they still had slaves. We wasn't equal. Think about it, Saints. Amen. We was not equal. It, it, even in the 40s, the 50s, they had segregation. White bathrooms only, colors. The water fountain was separated. But men was not created equal. But we taught it Independence Day. And, and I would just like to let you know that if we're not careful, saints of God, people of God, people of color, we're going to go back to the same way it used to be if we're not careful. And you're saying, well, how can it go back to the same way it used to be? Well, okay. 
You see what happened January the 6th? Mm. January 6th. No one get convicted. No one understand what I'm saying. They let all this go through. If that would if you or I today do something like that, we went into the jail. Mm. <laughs> I'm talking about Independence Day. And, and so we sign the declaration and we do all this and we make an amendment and all that and say everyone is created equal. We're gonna have freedom and everything. But that wasn't an independence day. I here to let you know, it might have been independence day, but that wasn't really independent. We look at Juneteenth. Which is happening now. We got another holiday. They're trying to say which is the most is important as an Independence Day. Is it Juneteenth? Is it Independence Day, 4th of July? No matter how you look at it, Independence Day, that's all good. But I have a better Independence Day. When we look at Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, when God made man in his image, that, that's why the Bible said in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. All that God has made man. After his own image, man had everything at his disposal, everything, anything that he needed. He had it. He had food. He had the cool breeze. He had water. He had everything. All he had to do was take care of the garden. That was it. He was free. No death, no penalty, nothing. Everything was just perfect. But when man sinned, that brought a separation between God and man. Mm -hmm. The soul that sinned shall what? die. Mm -hmm. Adam sinned. That was cut off. That broke it. Before you know it, we're chained in sin. No matter what you do, you never smoke, you never drank, you never curse, you never did anything. You dot every eye, you crossed every t you're still born and shaped in sin. You're still born and shaped in sin. Because what happens, let the truth be told, Jesus had to come down to die for us. He came through a virgin birth. Ladies and everyone that knows when a baby and when a lady get pregnant, it's the father's blood that's in that baby. It's the father's blood. So that's the reason why Jesus had to be born of a virgin birth, because he had his father's blood. And without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. The Bible said that he that the son set free is free indeed. In other words, when Jesus set you free, you are free. Each and every one of us have our own Independence Day. What is your Independence Day? This is a question I'm asking everyone today. What is your Independence Day? The day that you accept Jesus as your personal savior, the day that you were free from sin, the day that the chains were broken, the chains that everything was loose, the pulling down in a stronghold, all those things happened on Independence Day. That's what happened. That's the Independence Day. When you were set free from sin, yeah, yeah, I, I, I love Independence Day. I love having a barbecue. I love going out. That's great. But we got to look at it spiritually. A lot of times things that happen in the world, we got to look at it spiritually. I'm not saying bring the spirit world into the church. No, I'm not saying it. But we have to look at things differently. We blow up Independence Day, how they have sales and everything, and how they got all these different things going on, which is good. Tomorrow, they're going to have the... um. Le uh, Independence Day Parade. They're going to have cookouts and all that stuff. Great. It's wonderful. We can partake of that. But the thing is, is that really an Independence Day? Mm -hmm. See, when you look at it, if you go for a job and another person go for that, they may get the other person a job and not you because of the color of the skin. And we talk about independence. Why did Martin Luther King have to die? Marcus Garvey, Harriet Tubman, all those people had to be in existence. If Independence Day is, uh, happened in 1776, if it happened in 1776, all men are created equal, everything is beautiful, why do these people have to die? Think about that. We talk about independence. Yeah, we can vote right now. Yes, we have a black uh, vice president. Yes, we had a black president. Yes, we have a black mayor, black governor, different things going on. But do we still have that freedom? Mm. Hear what I'm saying? And, and that's where we have to be in Jesus. See, when you have that freedom in Jesus, Jesus is going to work things out. The scripture, I've never seen a righteous forsaken nor a seed begging bread. In other words, you don't have to worry about nothing. God has your, everything under control. But the thing is, we have to do our part. We have to do our part. We have to rally. We have to do, uh, do protests. God did it. And then people say, well, you shouldn't vote in different. Well, I, I beg the difference. If you look at Jesus, when he was getting crucified, 
They ask him, who shall we let go? Barabbas or Jesus? Now, if you're taking a choice, guess what? You're voting. You're voting. Mm -hmm. And you're voting against him. Or Pilate said, I don't want to have no part of this. Understand? But Pilate knew. And so that's why I'm saying Independence Day, the real Independence Day, is when Christ died on that cross. And, and, and to confirm it and to seal it up, it was the day of Pentecost that stamped the approval on that. Because now the Holy Spirit don't dwell on con man. It dwells in man. Amen. When we look at the old prophets, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, and different prophets, the Spirit of God came upon them. And they spoke. But now we as Christians, because Christ died on the cross and went back to his father and make an intercession for uh, you and I today, the spirit came down after he was resurrected. That's stamping the approval that their Independence Day is here. That's why Galatians said, be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. We have to be set free. But mm -hmm. once we set free, stay free. That's what it's all about. Staying free. Yes, you look at the world today. Why are they trying to do the voting rights and all those different things? Because they know that if we work together Amen. as a unit, we can be powerful. They believe in that scripture. They, they believe in that scripture. If one could put a thousand to flight, two could put 10,000 to flight. Could you imagine four or five saints getting together, worship and praising God? With the chains broken and we're going to stay free. That's why Paul Paul had the right to the Galatians. He had the right to the church because the church was acting up because they was going back into the world. And sometimes we as Christians today go back into the world. Mm. Mm. What do you mean go back into the world? Yeah. Because we're starting to go back where God has brought us from. God has took us out of sin. He took the line from our mouth and took different things from us. And then we go back and pick it up. That's crazy. But if you look at the world, if you was in prison and you had chains about, once you get loose, you want to stay free. Amen. Amen. You want to stay free. So if that person had chains on them and they broke the chains and they're free now, they don't want to go back. Mm. They don't want to go back. It looks crazy for them to go back. But we are sometimes Christian. We go back into the world. Mm -hmm. Be in church on Sunday. Go back in the world on Monday through Saturday and do the same thing. God said, he, when you're lukewarm, you make him sick to his stomach. The reason I say he make him sick is because he will spew you out. That's the word. He will spew you out if you're lukewarm. You got to be either hot or you got to be cold. You can't go straddling fences. And when you're straddling fences, you can fall. And you may fall on the bad ground. And you may not be able to come back. What is the real impendence thing? When did Christ rose in your life? Mm -hmm. When did you get set free? That's independence day. Because you don't have to worry about sin no more. Yes, the enemy's going to try because that's temptation. He tempted Jesus. If he tempted Jesus, he's definitely going to tempt you and I today. Mm -hmm. And the reason he tempted Jesus, because Jesus was weak at the particular time. He just got off the path. 40 days and 40 nights. And he's tired and hungered. He's hungry. And, and so the devil said, if thou be the son of God. You know he's the son of God. You know that. Mm -hmm. You know this. But but he used that word, if thou be. And sometimes we use that word, if you think you can. We say that there to provoke you. And then Jesus said, thou shalt not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. He told him that. He got tempted. And so you and I today, we're going to get tempted. I, I usually listen to people, well, the devil don't tempt me and they never try for me. Well, I have to stop and beg the difference. If he don't try to tempt you, if he don't try to distract you, if he don't try anything, that means he has you already. <laughs> Think about this one. Why would I try to get someone that I already has? <laughs> the temptation is going to be there. And what I'm saying, the temptation is there. That's good that the temptation is there. You can fight it. The Bible said, resist the devil and he shall flee. So Amen. if he's saying resist, that means temptation, the thing's going to come upon you that you have to resist. It's not going to be easy. But because of Independence Day, 
you have life and you have it more abundantly. Because of end of day, he's saying, don't go back no more. Yeah, you want to go back to God? So you want to go? Don't go back. Press for the mark of the high calling. The real independence day. When Christ was rose in my life. And, and, and it was so beautiful that how he died for me. It was a bad and sad story, but it turned out good on my behalf. Amen. We look at him when he was hung up on the cross and he got pissed in his side and he was whipping all these things that put the throne on his head and the blood. Now, could you imagine that nail in his hand? Stop and think when you get a paper cut, those that work with papers, you know, or a splinter, you know how that feels. Ouch, that's, that hurts. But when you think of that nail in the hand for you and I, mm -hmm, and he did all this for you and I, that yeah. man and God can be back together again. For without the shedding blood, there's no remission of sin. Mm -hmm. Bulls, lambs, bullock, they couldn't do it. They had to do it every time, every year. The priest would go into the Holy of Holies and, and with bells hanging down him. And you hear the bells ringing, going on our behalf. And all of a sudden, you don't hear that bell no more. <laughs> and what they would do is yank on the rope a couple of times. And, and, and then all of a sudden, I don't hear anything. Wait a minute. Let me yank one more time. And, and it, it, you still don't feel the tug back. What they have to do is run up pulling that rope out because he didn't make it. But I'm here to let you know that Christ died on that cross for us. And that veil was ripped from top to bottom. Not from bottom to up, but from top to bottom. And he only had to do it just one time. And because he did it that one time, it was done perfectly. And that's what I'm saying. Independence Day is for you and I today. What is your Independence Day? I, I know that Christ died, but he died for each and every one of us. But what day did he die in your life? See, I can say that yeah, he died June 3rd in 1967, 1976. I can say that happened to me. Mm -hmm. And I can say for you, what day did he die on the cross for you? Because we all have to stand before God ourselves. Because when we get up to heaven, they're going to say either two things. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Or you're going to say, depart from me. I know you're not. Your work is of iniquity. Mm -hmm. You can't say that I looked at so-and-so. And you can't say he said that. But we have to answer God for ourselves. That's why I'm saying it's Independence Day for each and every individual. Because you're going to hear this again. Well done or depart. Which one do you want to hear? Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Independence Day right now. See, Satan had us bound one time. He had us all confused, but because Christ died, he took away all that. We don't have to live in sin no more. We don't have to commit adultery. We don't have to fornicate. All those things are washed away. So if you did it, God will forgive you because of sin. He gave, forgive the lady that committed adultery. He forgave her. The dying thief on the cross, he forgave him. He said, this day thou shalt thou be with me in paradise. If you're going to be with him in paradise, you got to have independence day. It got to be an independence day. You ain't going to just go sin. You have to acknowledge your sins, ask for forgiveness, and he will forgive you. And when he forgive you, that's independence day. You're free. And he that the son sets free is free indeed. What I used to do, that's the past. I used to drink. I used to smoke. I used to do all these things. But that was the past. God has forgiven me. That's my independence day. And I'm not going back. That's why Paul had the stress. Be not entangled again. He's saying, don't be tangled in that again. I got you out the first time. Stay out. That's what we have to do. We have to stay out of sin. When temptation comes, resist. Yes, temptation is going to come into the mind. Sometimes you could be sitting in the pulpit. An enemy will throw things into your mind. But you don't dwell on it. That's what we have to do. Independence Day. Friends and family, we thank God for each and every one of you for even being on the line. But Independence Day, the real Independence Day, when Christ came into your life and set you free and you can have life and have it more abundantly. That's what he done for you and I today. The real in Independence Day, the real deal. That's the real deal. I thank it. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God bless you. And remember the real Independence Day. God bless you.
Say that again. I did you open the doors of the church, please. Yes, 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 yes. The doors of the church is now ajar and willing to open. It's open for each and every one of you. There may be an individual that do not know Jesus Christ as their personal savior. This is a wonderful time to accept them as your personal savior. Knowing that this is called Independence Day weekend. And you could be free. That's what independence means. You're free. You have the opportunity at this time. Anyone that do not know Jesus Christ as a personal Savior, we're asking that you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And the doors of the church open. You may not have a church home. Dr. McGugan is an awesome, profound teacher, preacher, and he can give you all that you need. He can give it to you. If you need a church home, this is the place to be. How can he be preached unless he be sent? And how can they hear the word unless you have a preacher? God bless you. God bless you, man. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Dr. Amen. Payne. Dr. Wesley Payne, Jr. We appreciate you, sir. To talk about the real Independence Day. Amen. When Jesus Christ set us free. Hallelujah. Thank you so Amen. much, sir. We love and appreciate you, Dr. Payne. If you have a cash app or any um, financial, um, uh, what's the other one? Zelle or whatever the case may be, let us know. I have all that. But, brother, it's for your friends and family day. I don't mind. Amen. Give it to the church. And he, give it to the church, you know, look out for the church. We got to help our church grow and not for the money. I'm just so grateful just to even be speaking for you. Amen. Right to the church. God has blessed Amen. me. And so many, he opened up another door for me. Yes. He's giving me finance. He's blessing me. Yes. So Amen. I want to be a blessing yes. to other people. And I tell people, when you be a blessing to other people, God even opened up yes. more doors for me. So, Amen. To the Amen. church. To the church. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Payne. We got our senior pastor, Dr. Ojingo, on the line. We heard, brothers and sisters, you heard the man of God declare the word of God. So feel liberated. Feel emancipated. Walk in your freedom. Don't let the world get you down. Don't let evil spirits get you in depression. Come out of that. Come out of that. Don't let anything or anyone deter you from enjoying your freedom. Amen. At the time, I'm going to turn it over to the hands of senior pastor, Doc. Let me just go over the rest of the schedule for, for this afternoon. We're going to have an altar call from Dr. Ojinga and then he's going to do communion and he can give words and do what he likes. Then we'll go into the ministry of giving. Then we'll go back. We'll hear a close of prayer for our senior elder Leach. And then we'll have our final remarks and benediction from none other than our guest preacher for our family and friends kickoff and in the form of Pastor Payne at this time in the hands of our senior pastor, Dr. Ojinga. Hallelujah. We thank God for you, uh, Pastor Wesley Snipes. Um, I, I could have said Wesley Snipes. <laughs> <laughs> we thank God for you, okay. Pastor Wesley Payne. We thank God for you. Mm. You know, I don't know, but you have brought a new awareness mm -hmm. to us today. Amen. You brought a new awareness. Mm -hmm. Throughout our lives, we celebrate our birthdays. We celebrate our wedding anniversaries. We celebrate all the national holidays, including the Independence Day. But I am searching my memory to see if anyone has ever asked me out to a, a celebration to celebrate their true Independence Day. I don't know about you. If, if you have ever had that invitation extended to you, I'm saying, man, you were blessed. You were blessed. Do we ever remember the day that we got saved? <laughs> we don't even know the year and the month. My God, my God. This is something we ought to remember because it ought to be celebrated. No. Yes, it is. It's the true independence. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Of all the freedoms, that indeed freedom is the freedom that we ought to celebrate. So, uh, Pastor, Pastor Payne, it was a wonderful, wonderful word. It's very, uh, very stimulating, very motivating. And I am sure that in every mind here that received this word, we will know that we have another day to include 
you know, our days, the list of days that we celebrate, our independence, the true independence is when we got free. I heard one powerful word this morning about independence from Pastor uh, Dr. Uh, Allen Hand. I know I'm hearing another one. Okay. Yes, it is very important to remember our true independence so that we can celebrate it. Bless you. Because it is the true right. independence right. that empowers us to find freedom in every other area of our lives. Amen. So thank you so much for your word uh, this morning. Father God, we thank you for this man that you have allowed to bring us your word directly from you. We thank you, oh God, that it has touched us in a way, oh God, that we have never been touched before. And we are thanking you that today we have a new celebration that we're going to add to the list of our celebrations. And that's that, that day when you touched us and you made us whole. You saved us from sin, death, and the grave. And you included us in that list that will be with you in eternity. This is a day worth celebrating.